Do -do 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 -do. So we are now live somewhere and somewhere and somewhere. I did select a few out few outlet. So if you see any somewhere, then you can share. <laughs> okay. Glad to see you, my friend. You too, brother. I'll just put it on my channel. Yeah. Can, can you see already? I, I can't. I can't see. I haven't got it on anywhere, but I'm just going to put it on my Facebook. Okay. Okay. Um, probably coming slowly. Um, okay. We good? Yeah, you, you begin, brother. I'm just... Uh... Excellent. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. That name, the holy name of God, the holy name. Father, we just come before you, Jason and I, to present ourselves, Lord, Father, to you. To say, Lord, you hear our cry. You know. You know our hearts. You know what you have put in our hearts. For our hearts belong to you, Father. And you know all things. You know all things, Lord. Father, sanctify us, Lord. Cleanse us, watch us, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us our ignorance, forgive us our procrastination, forgive us our slothfulness, Father. Forgive us for the things that we do wrong and the things that we might not even do wrong without knowing. Father, we come before you to present ourselves. You have the throne of grace. Oh. That's where we receive mercy and find grace in times of need. For we have a Savior who can relate to our weaknesses. He was tempted in all points, yet he didn't sin. But for our sake, he took upon himself our sins. Nailed them to the cross. Gave up the ghost, gave you his spirit. He put his spirit into your hand. Father, on the third day, he rose again. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So, Father, we speak about the resurrection life today, the character of the disciple, Father. We speak about what really matters and what is really at the heart of the mission of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we pray, give us the grace. And those who will be hearing this message, I pray in the name of Jesus. Touch them. Give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. For those who mean business with you, Father, give them the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this is not natural. It is supernatural, Father. So we pray. Remember mercy, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. How are you? I'm okay, bro. How's your day today? Uh, I've had a nice, uh, quiet day studying and been studying yeah. Jeremiah, studying Ooh. Jeremiah, the book of Ooh. Isaiah. <laughs> yes. Wow. You, t you did them all. So, yeah, so I've enjoyed it, bro. You need to give me your secret. I don't know. Because, because, because I know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, um, as soon as if I open the book of Jeremiah or Isaiah, I just get boom in one place. It's like I didn't know it was here, Lord, and then I'm gone. I'm just beginning to talk about all of this. It's just it's just crazy. Honestly, it makes me almost like stop and then boom. So tonight uh, we have a Des and Lynn Harper watching us from Leeds, and we have Anthony Ashibad. Oh, watching us. Um, brother, I forgot where you're watching us from, but God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And we thank God for those who will be joining us again later on. So, my friend, we're talking about the character of the disciples on the mission. Mm, mm. Do you want to say something about it before I talk about the uh, the, uh, the character of the disciple, please? Is um, there anything? So, yeah. um, I mean, you, you, you mentioned about the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Uh, before they started so 
mm -hmm. uh, as we go into that and the yeah. things that, that you're about to share just mm -hmm. a, a few historical things to remind us of that please that as you go into this how important it is around about 1933 there was a, a german theologian called dietrich bonhoeffer and yeah. he saw he saw the nazis coming into the country and doing what they were doing but people weren't discerning it so what he did he wrote a book called cost of discipleship which mm -hmm. was the next which was an exposition of the sermon on the mount and wow. what he was trying what he was trying to do is awaken the church to be true disciples so that mm -hmm. they would stand against evil but guess what they didn't listen to the book and nazism came in like a flood another yeah. example is the rwanda and hutis when they massacred two yes. million two million people got massacred but it's interesting that they were regarded as christians on both sides but they weren't getting discipled and yes. they ended up massacring each other two million people so if if we're not listening to what is being shared today uh, both corporately as churches and individually have massive impact upon communities so it's important what we're about to learn absolutely absolutely and um just to as a, as a small recap for our brothers and sisters who probably was, were not there at the beginning we talked a lot about mission and discipleship uh just for them to know and one thing that we insisted upon was that there is a cost there's a cost of being a disciples there's a cost of going into missions there is a of course the lord is going to be with you because he never leaves us nor forsake us it's, he is with us wherever we go but now the lord is with, with us in the pain and the trials you know he's with us in all of that in the fire through the fire through sickness we are not to pray for him to take us out of it we are to pray for him to be with us as we go through them yeah. so I, that's some of the things that we insisted upon. We talked about um, the, the fact that we cannot deny that sometimes in the West, our Christianity is really, really, uh, it hasn't got a substance because our concern are more about how to maintain the building, how to have a nice car parking space, and um, how far is the church building from from your house and um how do you like the pastor or the worship team and all of that but when you go to africa <laughs> i know I'm, I'm i know i'm getting you angry right now <laughs> when you go to africa you find out there are people who walk miles and mm. sit in a meeting we worry about a meeting going on for more than an hour no we worry about a message going on for more than half an hour we don't mind singing for an hour and a half but a message that's supposed to be teaching us a word, we worry about it going for more than half an hour. But back in Africa and other places in India, they walk for miles and they sit down for four hours, sometimes listen to the message, and they walk again for miles. Talk to me about just that bracket before we go, please, of your experience in Ghana. Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, pe pe because... Uh, in my experience is that african people do want to sit in the service longer they, there are a number of people that uh, have a passion for god um mm -hmm. we're always watching the time here they they don't watch the time over there yeah. so i, I find i've found that true absolutely so 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 we so we talked about a lot of those issues that the church is facing we mentioned in revival that the church needs to awake from its sleep and um, we are the light of the world god has nobody else to use i mean he would use the unbelievers he's probably going to give them dreams and everything and they will do whatever they have to do but for the gospel message to go out god is relying on the believers those oh. who are supposed to be representing his name oh. his character his word to go out and do what they've been called to do yeah. what they've been commanded to do so we talked about in matthew 20 uh, 20, uh the last chapter matthew 28 jesus said 
all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. So because I have authority, because all has been given to me, because of that knowledge and that understanding, go therefore into all the world and preach my gospel. Not making speeches. Preach my gospel in, dem in demonstration of the spirit and power. The gospel is the, has the power of God to change the lives of people. The gospel has the power of God to bring faith to the hearer of the word of the gospel. And this is what we were supposed to go and do. But what we have done is we got comfortable. Mm -hmm. We got comfortable in our buildings. Mm -hmm. So we began to have different kind of... Sorry if I'm going on, brother. It's okay. We began to have different yeah. kind of preachers because now all we wanted was to entertain the people who are coming to the building every week, week in, week out, and they're not having experiences. So they come to the same building. So now you have to entertain them by having different speaker coming. All right. Mm -hmm. And then by having different music worship, by having different kind of stuff programs to entertain the people. Otherwise, they look for entertainment somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just going to ask you this. Um, having gone to Ghana, those who join us today for the first time might not know that you you, you're moving back to Ghana and mm. that uh, do you want to brush up a little bit of what challenges awaits you as you move back to Ghana, especially they know you're coming for, from England. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think, I think brother that, you know, you've been saying a lot since I've, I've, I've met you about the importance of discipleship. And I think, you know, in John 17, our Lord, when he was praying to the father, he was saying that they may know that they may know you as I know you, that they may be one mm -hmm. as I am one. Yeah. And uh, it's that one-to-one -one personal relationship. And like yeah. you said, it's not about a building. It's not about programs. It's not about entertaining. It's that one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one personal relationship. And I think mm -hmm. that it's getting alongside people, whether they're in the marketplace, where, wherever they are in the homes and the villages, getting alongside those individual people and introducing them and then in Philippians chapter 1 and Philippians chapter 3, uh, Paul's really concerned about believers being mature. And it's and grounded them in that maturity, which, which uh, the Sermon on the Mount is an example of what a, a mature believer is. So I think that the, me and my wife is to connect with people, to connect them to Christ, and then to bring them into maturity and not to be sidetracked by any other issues come in but i mustn't let them get sidetracked and one of the sidetracks is personalities in philippians chapter one paul is concerned that personalities preaching for fame and money but he, he just focuses on christ he says for me to live is christ so when i get there I must, I, yeah i must ignore personalities ignore big names and just focus on the one-on-ones twos and twos and, and introduce them to the lord and get them to grow in maturity and myself to grow in maturity as well. Mm -hmm. The call to maturity is a call to the body of Christ. Yeah. And uh, the, the word is very clear. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Okay? We grow into what? We grow into the character of the one who saved us. Hallelujah. We grow into what? We grow into a holy building, a spiritual house. Okay? We are all stones being built into a spiritual house. And this is what 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 is saying. So mm -hmm. as we present our bodies a living sacrifice, as we move into the character of the disciple now, a disciple is somebody who has understood, like Lynn just said, is somebody who, live, who lives a disciplined life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, a disciple is somebody who understands that it's not about the mission, it's about the person putting their lives, giving their lives. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 verse 1 says, as simple as this, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship. Mm -hmm. So I remember, I'm sorry, I'm going to bring you back and forth a bit. I remember one of the things that you said that was very powerful to me, my brother, and I will never forget it. That's what I like. I thank God for the, the Holy Spirit, is that 
the very thing that we started with, he said, your view of God will determine your drive to mission, to loving your neighbors. Can you just expand a little bit on that, please? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's, this is really important. I think, I think uh, I, I'll be blunt here. For those who are reformed and aren't more conservative, they think yeah. they have the doctrine and so, but they need to have a, a greater experience of God. But for those yeah. who are on the Pentecostal charismatic side, they need to have a greater teaching of who God is. But all of yeah. us, we've got higher in our worship and treasure mm -hmm. God. The fact mm -hmm. that our nation is secular, the fact that, that our nation, uh, Britain, is weak spiritually, America's weak spiritually, and, and across the hemispheres, it's down to the fact that we don't treasure God. You, uh, Christ said, take up your cross and follow me. He said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you must put me b before your family. And mm -hmm. it's that treasuring him above mm -hmm. everything else. And we won't get that until we get into that secret place, Psalm 27. Uh, and mm -hmm. you know quite a lot of scriptures about the secret place. We get into that secret place. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it begins with worship. What If mm -hmm. we don't treasure God. Mm -hmm. That's why Carey was willing. It took six months for Carey, William Carey, to get from UK to India. When he got to India, uh, the guy who was supposed to have the money sold, uh, sold, got rid of his money uh, for spoons. And then they went to sell the spoons and scissors in the market. And everybody had spoons and spoons, 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 spoons and scissors. So they lost all the money. So they had no money on the mission field. Then his wife went crazy. Then the mission house burnt down, the mission station burnt down. And, and, and what sustained William Carey was a great view of God. You're not, you're not going to sacrifice unless you really treasure Christ. Uh, James um, Ch Chalmers, I think it was, uh, he went to uh, uh, the, the New Hebrides, is where he lived, you know. Uh, he was threatened every day for getting eaten by them. And in the end of his life, he was eaten by cannibals. He was eaten. Um, why, why did he give his life? Why did he do that? It's because Christ meant everything to him. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Let me ask you something, Joseph. What God said to you tonight, just dropped it right down in your heart by the Spirit. Pack everything. I want you to go this year to Cameroon and give your rest of your life to Cameroon and for that area of Africa. Would you do it? I was presented by God. Like, for two years, I was praying. And then... I was invited to come to Africa and I went away for two weeks to my mom and dad in a caravan. And I spent two weeks just meditating alone. And God was asking me this, will you give up everything, everything for me? And I had to count the cost and I had to give him everything. That which was the most precious to me, I had to give it back to him and I had to go. And would you willing to give that which is most precious to you, Joseph? Would you be willing, just for the sake of argument, if he said to you, give me your children, give me your wife, give me your house, give me it, would you hand it to him? And that goes for all of us. And until we reach that place when Christ means everything, it's only then that we can enter into the real spiritual blessings. And, it, and uh, it's when we get to that place of the altar of really giving. And it's no fun. It's no game. It, this is reality. You can't just hand it over like that. I had to pray solidly for two weeks. And, and that which was most precious to me, that which I loved the most, I had to hand it to him. I said, and put it in his hands. What is most to you? All we were listening. You have to give it to him. And then he might say, stay where you are. But he might say, pick up your bags. It's time to move. Mm -hmm. It's time to move to America. It's time to move. Maybe you've got to move down the local area and live amongst the drug addicts. I don't know. You wouldn't believe it, what you just said, because it's, it's not just prophetic what you just said. It's um, God, will, God is doing something in that area of myself and is moving me probably unknown to myself you don't even know you, you just confirm something live okay yeah. last year i was provoked to pray for cameroon yeah. Yeah. and i prayed for cameroon from february march april until may yeah. 
And then they even asked me to send some prayer, some prayers in Cameroon, and the prayers went even on the national TV. Yeah. I still got them. I will probably forward you the link. Yeah. So, because I wanted to go last year, and then COVID happened, and the people told me, please pray for our Cameroon. There was war over there. The English side, which is like 10%, was fighting against the French side because of injustices, whatever that is. So we were provoked to pray for Cameroon. As I go there now, for all the people who have been supporting me, the tickets have been bought the 1st of April. Mm. That's it. Done. Okay. So, brother, I'm telling you, this is live. Nobody among watching us know about it. Okay? So, on the, as I go there, I can't tell you how many people, not just are waiting, now, not in the main city, in villages. Mm. Mm. So my children, my wife, we're all going to go to the villages. Amen, brother. Amen. So, so yes, it, do I, if, if God tells me, of course I'm going to pray. Of course I'm going to worry. Of course I'm going to be fearful. Of course I'm going to question a few things. But in the, my heart, I know what God wants. And mm. that's the challenge, my brother. We all really know what we should do. Mm, 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 but we mm. give excuses mm. God is looking for those who are willing and then he will do what he wants to do and when he wants to do it okay mm. so yes it's no playground it's no play play I'm even going to have a translator in my own patois because I forgot it that's how bad things are <laughs> you know what I'm saying so yes my brother I completely understand God will have to rock the body he's going to have to shake us a little bit so we move out of our comfort zone. And I'm telling you, I told you this many times, God sent you back here for this past couple of months. We haven't seen each other for what? 18 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 18 years. And now you come on my way like a crossover. When I'm going, you come, fire me up so I can go. You don't understand the signs that have been confirming. So yes, I agree with you. It will cost not something, it will cost us everything to serve our believing God. It will cost us, no, it cost Jesus his life, it cost the disciples their lives, but the Bible says they live not for themselves anymore. And yeah. that's what we're talking about tonight. Discipleship, these are the people who have realized that if one died, one, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, if one died, all died. And those who live, they don't live for themselves anymore. They live for him who died for them. Mm. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 14, 15, and 16. So our lives don't belong to us anymore, my brother. Thank you. We have given what? What did we say? Oh, I become a Christian. No, you gave your heart to God. Why? Because your heart is your life. As a man thinks in his heart, so is the man. Everything about you is in your heart. So if you give it to God, he will turn you around. He will give you the desires of yeah. your heart. Now, because in Psalm 37, verse 4 to 5, because you delight yourself in God, he begins to give you the desires of your heart. But the desires of your heart are his desires, okay? His desires are what? To save the lost, to preach the gospel, to go yeah. into every yeah. place. To bring the light of the gospel into every place. And that's what he wants, my brother. So you don't yeah. understand. You're stirring me up. Go ahead. So, so uh, I'm just interested in how God is working in you and how he's working in me. Is that the, the travail of your soul, the birth pangs of your prayers. It was the same with me, the birth pangs. It's like, yeah. it's like God puts his heart in you and, you and you birth it in that prayer. And then he asks you. Okay, I'm going to answer, but when I answer, are you willing to give it, give your all? So yeah. for those, for those, if God is staring in you right now for the people, yeah. you know, that's God doing that, that he's putting that on you. But when yeah. you get to that point where he's, you know he's about to open that door, he's then going to ask you, are you willing to pay the price? I think of, I think of John Knox. He said, mm -hmm. give me Scotland or I'll die. Yes. Give me Scotland <laughs> or I die. You know, it's, you might you might be praying. Someone might be praying. Give me Manchester or I die. And God will say, "Come on, okay, <laughs> I'll give it to you." But what are you willing to give me? 
come are on. You to, come are on. you willing to give me your heart? Give me your all. <laughs> Lay yeah. everything down. Was that Rachel who said, give me a child or I die? She was praying the temple. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. She was praying the temple and the, the, the priest thought she was drunk. He said, oh. you don't understand. I'm <laughs> agonizing. I need children right now. Give me a child or I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, it was Hannah, Hannah, Hannah Chuck. Ah, Hannah, yeah, thank you, one, thank one you. That's why I wasn't sure. Absolutely. You see, because, I, I, you know, as you spoke to me live, mm. it just brought back to my memory because even when I was praying, I wasn't thinking much deeper, you mm. see. I didn't know. I didn't know how I would have enough funds to go. And as soon as I said to my family, I feel like I need to go, everybody said yes. And now, normally, we'll think about it. Okay, Joseph, you know, it's going to cost you. It was, you know, <laughs> we all going to think about it. And then I will look for an excuse that will make me hesitate. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this time, my children are the one pushing me to go. Mm -hmm. They're pushing us to go. And I know something will happen over there that God has prepared already. So Amen. Amen. I want to thank God. So talking about the disciples in John chapter eight, you know, the scripture says, if you continue in my words, oh. then you are my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. People like that last part, but he said first, that if you continue in my words, okay. Mm, mm. One of the mark of a disciple is that, like Lynn said earlier, he has a discipline to mm. continue in the words of God, not in his opinion, mm, not in mm. other people's. Continue in the words of God, because the word of God is what, it, what is able to make you wise, not just for salvation, to cause you to stand when you're going through trials and tribulation on the mission field. Mm, so mm. I want to let you pick up from here if you have a few points, and then if you want, then we can start. Because I want to start with the, the, the Beatitudes a little bit, just to read them a bit, and then we can all comment on over them, please. Yeah, I think uh, if you want to get excited about the word discipline every day, yeah. discipline, allow the Spirit of God to teach you, ask the Holy yeah. Spirit to teach you, yeah. chew over it, meditate on it. Psalm 119, yeah. read Psalm 119. That will teach you how to yeah. read the Word of God. And also when the Word of God, Look at it from a christ center point of view. Christ said in the end of Luke, he said, you know, everything in, in the Old Testament, he was saying Psalms and, and, and whatever. It's all about him. So read the, Bible, read the Bible, christ centered. allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, meditate, and do it every day, discipline, uh, and, and read Psalm 119 that will teach you how to read the Bible. Amen. Absolutely. So discipleship is, is about character. Now, Jesus, before he started his ministry, he called the 12. And he called the 12 that they might be with him, not mm. to visit him. So some of the 12 were working nights and coming on the daytime. So for six months, Peter, James, and John, they were working with him during the day. And at night, they were going fishing mm. until the, Jesus made a miracle of fish. Then they left all now and thought, you know what? Forget about this miracle. Let's just grab the man himself. You know what I'm saying? So they left all. So they were part-timers first. And then after that, they thought, you know what? Go away from me. I'm a sinful man. Jesus said, oh, I know. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> oh. Now he left all and followed him. You need that encounter. We talked about an encounter oh. that oh. once you get you, your view of God will be birthed out of the encounter that you'll have with him. Like, you know, we know Paul said, what, what would you have me to do, Lord? Peter said, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. You know, without God having to say anything, you know. Job said in Job 40, 42, I used to hear about you. Now my eyes sees you. I despise myself. You know, oh, yeah. so that encounter we talked during the... Anybody wants to know, uh, we have those videos on YouTube or on Facebook. You can watch them later. We're talking about the encounter. The encounter is important for anybody who's a believer because yeah. that will never leave you when the trials come. You will know whom you have believed and you will know that you saw what you saw. And nobody, no doctrine, 
No mm. famous man of God, no famous preacher will take it away from you. Because mm. of what you saw, you believe, that's it. Amen. So, and that's so the encounter is very important. And uh, so, in Matthew chapter 5, so Jesus sat down to teach his disciples, okay? And uh, for Matthew chapter 4, he's doing amazing, tremendous miracles, signs and wonders, okay? And he's drawing the crowd. Miracles always going to draw the crowd. Come and get your miracle tonight, we'll draw the crowd. Sounds and wonders, they will draw people, but they will not make disciples. Because sensationalism is good. It draws a crowd. But they come not because they believe. They just want to see a miracle. Okay? But then they can go back. But Christ's miracle were not for just miracle's sake. It was to show, demonstrate the glory of God. Amen? Oh, and that yeah. was it. He never done anything that the Father didn't tell him to do. So he wasn't doing it for show. He wasn't doing miracle crusades. That, that was not his idea. So in Matthew chapter 5, Verse 3, so he sat down to teach and he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Yeah. The poor in spirit are those that, you know, I, I, I read a little bit, I studied a little bit with a friend of mine, a brother, a brother, an elder in the faith called Maurice Barrett from Barrett Ministries in Manchester. And he went through it because we believe this is the, 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 manifest, the manifesto of a character of a disciple. Yeah. The one of the foundational principle of the being poor in spirit is humility. And yeah. we find humility as a true assessment of yourself. Not what people say about you is how your true assessment of yourself. That you know you're a stinker. You know you're a sinner. You know you desperately need God. You know you're yeah. bankrupt of the spirit of God and you want God. And one of the things about the poor in spirit being humble is to do with the character of Christ. Philippians 2 verse 5, I have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Blessed yeah. the poor in spirit. Amen. So that's that's the first. I'm, I'm, this is like the entrance of the kingdom. Yeah. That was amazing. That. So I don't know if you want to continue or we just continue to read them over. Uh, there are three things that you need to learn for leaders. Humility, humility, humility. You start off with humility and you keep humility. <laughs> yeah. I like that because in 1 Peter chapter 5, if you don't mind me saying, just backing up what you say, I like that. In 1 Peter chapter 5, I think verse 7 and 8, it says, be clothed with humility. Mm, mm. I call humility the dress code of heaven. Mm. Because you can't, you, you should never take it off. Because, and, and you're absolutely right. You can't come in without humility. You can't bob your head out. You have to stay humble, and it's going to happen all the way through. So you're absolutely 100% right on that. Mm. Amen, brother. Amen. Do you want to add to it, or you want to read the next one, please? I, I think, uh, no, I, I think uh, the, when the Spirit of God works in you, it convicts you, and, 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 and you know that you're only saved by what Christ has done, and that humility yeah. of trusting in him, you should yeah. carry it in. And the Amen. disciples had to learn to be teachable. Yes. If, if you're going to be a missionary or an evangelist or a leader in the church, or if you're going to disciple other people, you have yeah. to have the humility to be discipled. And a lot of yeah. people, they want to, the, a lot of people that get converted very often, they, they, they still got a lot of pride and they're not willing to listen. They're not willing yeah. to, to, to submit to someone, you know? So it's important if anybody here wants to grow, really grow, you have to, Keep that shut and listen to people and learn from them. And if you don't do that, you're never going to grow. You're always going to be stunted. So it's important what you're saying, Joseph. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and I look, I look at it. It's not very much taught today. Humility. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, it's not something you take off. It's not something you can't say I was humble yesterday. It's a way of life as a Christian. It's the entrance to the kingdom. Amen. You can't say, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I get no. Jesus put a child in the middle. He said, hey, unless you become like one of these, <laughs> it, absolutely. Darren, he said, childlikeness, absolutely. Desalini says you need teachable spirit, absolutely. No matter what comes against you. This is absolutely, it's, 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 a, 
is the entrance is essential. The second one is blessed, oh. blessed those who mourn, they shall be comfortable, com comforted. Oh. You know, we see Peter almost when he went on his knees, on his face, yeah. And he saw himself. There's something about when you humble yourself, yeah. you will see clearly stuff. Yeah. Jason, nobody, when you truly know who you are, yeah. when you truly know, when God truly reveals to you who you are, yeah. you will yeah. humble yourself to the dust. In fact, you'll want to disappear. Yeah. Yeah. When God truly showed, Peter said, go away from me. I am a sinful man. Jesus never said anything. Yeah. There's something about when Paul can say, I am a chief sinner. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about yeah, I'm a list, I'm the list of the saints. Amen. There's, Amen. there's something about Job saying, God who boasted about Job at the beginning, he's a righteous man, he loves me, he hates you, he's blameless. And Job goes, Oh my goodness, I just I just saw you. How dare? Mm, yeah, mm. go ahead, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I think I think you're highlighting something here about true Christianity and true experience of God. The more closer yeah. to you, the more closer you get to the light, the more you're exposed. Yeah. This idea that we just clap hands and jump up and down and it's all joy, joy. No, the more you get to know God, the more you get to know how how vile you are. So yeah, there yeah. is now no condemnation, and we yeah. and we we revel in the. joy. But also here in this verse, what you're pointing out is that actually you get you get to see the the, the deep depravity of your own heart, and that's Amen. real. That's real Christian experience because that keeps you humble. It keeps you dependent on on the grace of God rather than on your own strength, brother. So, and God has ways of keeping us humble. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Karen is saying, "Is humility thin? Can you see it when pride goes?" absolutely but they yes. both cannot coexist yeah but what makes me laugh is those people who say they're humble i'm humble oh, you <laughs> how, can, how can you say you're humble you don't say you're humble yeah it's on assuming one of the thing again as we go here blessed means being the right place yeah and yeah. this is as we go through this is god perception of you this is not how you see yourself definitely not <laughs> this is God saying, I am happy if you are like this. And he's the one who can see it. Because <laughs> yeah. you and I, to be honest with you, I came across to many people are very arrogant and proud. Mm. And it's completely something I was even thinking about. And I'm thinking, all I was doing is to trying to accommodate somebody. I was going the extra mile to accommodate and then it was saying as pride. Is yeah. it come to the point that you can't even judge yourself? Yeah, you yeah. are at the mercy because yeah. the only opinion that counts, you know, Jason, is one his opinion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, amen. Absolutely. So, Darren Lindsay said, talks about bankruptcy is good, it's a good place to start. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, amen. So, when you see yourself, how bankrupt you are, it gets you to mourn this morning here. Mm. is grieving about your bankruptcy state. It's not about somebody dying and you're grieving about it. No, that's not. That's nothing to do. This is about when you see yourself, like you said, in, in the unapproachable light of God, you go, wow, I need him. Then the next one now, I like, I think the, the Lord put them in order. The next one is, blessed are the meek. They shall be, they shall inherit the earth. Now, the meek people are the teachable now. We've been talking about it. Because now you realize that who you are now is like, okay, you're like Moses. He was the meekest man on earth, Numbers 22. He was the meekest man on earth. He, he can, God can tell him stuff and, he, you know, it didn't make sense. Think yeah. about it. Raise your stick, stretch over the water. <laughs> Think yeah. about it. Yeah, it, it was almost out of this world, honestly, honestly. I, I mean, so it's one of the, uh, uh, Ruth is confirming audience of one. Absolutely. Yeah. So so that's one of the things that we're talking about. So you become meek, you become teachable. Now you're willing to listen, you're willing to hear, like you were saying. And then now, 
and then what you said as well is that we're thanking God for the gift of the Holy Spirit because he will help you to discern mm, yeah, yeah. in the midst of all of this. And obviously, next one, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now that you've seen your sp spiritual state, obviously now all you want is Jesus because you've seen it. You know, apart from him, you could do nothing. Mm, yeah. So you hunger and thirst. You want more. You want more all the time. You become, because you're becoming teachable, you become mm. like a child. So mm. you want more. Can I have more? So mm. you, you devour the word because the Holy Spirit is energizing you. You devour the word. You know, you go to conference and seminars. You know, you, you're ready to go because you're hungering and thirsting for him. Mm. And then another thing, you want more intimacy with him. Mm. Go ahead, brother. No, and... and just back up there blessed other me me doesn't mean weakness doesn't no. mean you doesn't mean you're someone who can be a pushover you can mm -hmm. you know you're strong but it just means that you have that humility to yeah uh serve and mm -hmm. to uh you know learn from others you know there are people who who have been growing for years for mm -hmm. years but they're willing to listen to someone who's just been born again that's meekness yeah you know yeah and then that thirst in it you you have that hunger for for god and mm -hmm. and that desire for the word of god it, and, mm -hmm. it, and it and it's a consuming passion when the spirit of god works in you it's a Amen. it's an all-consuming passion it, this yes. is the only matters and yes. you see through the superficiality of materialism you see through Amen. the superficiality of your own psychology you realize that you yes. you just that everything's fake and you pursue yeah. The reality of all realities which is god amen this is where you drop the mask this is where you say no no more yeah. worry masks anymore you can see what is superficial boldness begins to grow because you're sucking up the word you're eating the word you're dividing the word the holy spirit is working in you because of that humility and teachable spirit and and uh, again meekness is like power under control you mm -hmm. know who you are you know what, how God took you, so you're not weak, absolutely. In fact, Jesus can be so meek, he can entrust you. He, he, you know, he said, I could call 12 legions, mm. and they will come here and just wipe the floor. But no, I'm just going to stay. He said in Matthew 11, around verse 28, he says, For I am meek and lowly in heart. You mm. come to me, all you have, you know, it's, so it's one of those. So yes, absolutely. You, you, you're hungry and thirsty, you want more. Passion is in it. I thank you for that. Absolutely. You become passionate for the things of God. Amen. Oh, yeah. And then the next one. So as you're growing, and, and the promise that you will be filled. I like that. It has a good promise. God is faithful. He will fill you. If you're hungry and thirsting, he will fill you with his word. Amen. You will have the Holy Spirit flowing and overflowing. Hallelujah. Oh. Then, uh, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Without going to definition, one of the things that I've noticed, I don't know if you notice it, some Christians, the longer they're Christians, some of them, the more gossiper they are, the more backstabbing they are, the more, they should be more merciful to the newcomers. They should be more forgiving to the newcomers. They should be, their words should be seasoned. They should be, you know, because remember they saw themselves Mm -hmm. They were poor, bankrupt. They saw themselves, and then all of mm -hmm. a sudden, they it's like the longer you're a Christian, the less merciful you become. But it should be the opposite, right? It's a good point, brother. Is it? There's a is there a verse that says, you know, she she forgives. Uh, she's been she loves much because she's been forgiven much. And, Absolutely, uh, to, to, whom, to whom much is forgiven, love much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, when when you know that your own sinfulness and that you're forgiven yeah. but very often as believers those who've been going a long time you can settle yeah. into a, relig a religiosity where you become yeah. a bit proud because you haven't fallen and you judge the b young believer who's falling all over the place yes. you should show the this group. is it this is it so it's really important for us to notice that and uh, if it's possible as much as possible as we grow into godliness one of the signs of maturity is that we are quick to forgive. We are quick to be merciful, okay? Because God has been merciful to us, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's in reaction to that, that we can now 
be merciful to others. Mercy is like undeserved favor, okay? So you don't this, you don't that, but you know what? God has been merciful to me, you see? And that's why he's saying here, blessed are those who are merciful. God is happy to see you merciful because you will obtain mercy. This is what will happen as Amen. you sow, you reap. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. Yeah, continue, brother, if you want to. Um, think, and then the mercy, if, if you, is it okay to go on just talk about Yeah, praying? please, please. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so, so, so then because you've been forgiven, then you have a, a desire to please the Father. And you want to avoid sin. And so... You desire you you begin to be sensitive uh mm -hmm. you know people can uh, say to someone like uh, say a lady comes in the church and say oh don't wear that short skirt and you you you're wear a bit you're wearing a bit too revealing but people don't have to do that because this as someone pursuing God the spirit of God begins to teach them and they began to do, they begin to do it because they the 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 sense in that the grieve in the spirit the sense that they're turning away from the world so once you know the mercy of god you begin to clean you want to please the father naturally and stay yes. away from that which is unclean you know it's like we, we forget very quickly don't we <laughs> it's almost like you you start to humble like you said very powerfully one two three humility 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 because you start to humble all of a sudden you become subtly self-righteous yeah yeah you forget we, we we forget we're very forgetful people god says our words in galatians chapter 4 our words should be seasoned with grace that is like they should come out with grace you know what i'm saying so yeah. we should yeah. understand that we should be loving and more in fact we should have we should grow in love we should grow in patience yeah. we should grow in the fruit of the spirit that's what we're talking about the character because as a disciple, as you go on the field, whether in your area or overseas, you're going to find a lot of immature believers. You're mm. going to find a lot of immature pastors. Huh? Huh? Mm. Huh? <laughs> you're going to find a lot of immature. So you're going to, so that I, I always say to, you know, I have a different Bible study group. I always say to them, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, you know, love, joy, gentleness, they're all to be practiced first in the house, in the household of God. Mm, mm, mm. Because the people you expect love and praying for you and all that, sometimes some other things can come out of them. And you're thinking, oh, I need patience here. I need to love more here. Mm, mm, you see what I'm mm, saying? Mm, yeah. So it's one of those. So you cannot hear from God, stay consistent with God, except you have developed the discipline of a disciple. Mm, mm. And a disciple is the one who follows the discipline of Christ, who continues in the word of Christ, and who is not worried about the consequences of his belief and his standing on, in righteousness. Because mm. the more you shine the light, the more you expose the darkness, not just in you, but in people. So mm. you become a reading epistle. So people can see you, you are exposed. And your light exposes others as well. Oh. Amen. I, I, I think I think uh, it has to be addressed on a couple of issues because Come on, people, go ahead. There, there are people in fellowships that are that are feeding on certain things that is not of God, and and it's stunting their growth because it mm -hmm. says here, "Blessed are the peacemakers," because when, mm -hmm. once you start to grow like this and you're growing in maturity, you want to edify the body, you want to build the mm -hmm. body, and very often. Uh, it, it's good to be discerning and negative about church in terms of if there's false heresies and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there's certain people that all they ever do is talk about the negativities of people, the negativities That's not right. of church. That's not, and, That's not good. And they should be pursuing mm -hmm. God, first of all, keeping their eyes on God. Mm -hmm. and, and they're feeding on the negativity. Some feed on the negativity. Of, they keep looking at their past, keep looking at the mistakes, keep looking how uh, unworthy they are. Uh, and so these two aspects, some people look at others and pointing out their negativity and then people looking at their own negativity. But the Christian life is, is first of all, a positive thing in terms of like you're, pursu you're, pursuing, you're pursuing Christ and you're pursuing to, to be a peacemaker. And, you know, 
a church, a group, of, a fellowship cannot grow if it has people within it who are caught in discord. Because it dis because if there's young believers come in a fellowship and it's being sown dis, those young believers can't establish themselves because they're they're upset by what's happening. So it's important that those who keep causing division by gossiping, criticizing leaders or unnecessarily and 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 and, and whatever yeah, and those who are are doing that, they have to stop it. It's not spiritual. It's spiritual to call out heresy. It's spiritual to say there are dark times, but it's not spiritual to live, live every day criticizing fellow believers, fellow Christians. Mm -hmm. That is not going to get you anywhere. And I've seen this in reform circles, Calvinistic mm -hmm. circles. I've seen it in Pentecostal circles, and it doesn't get anywhere. People have to stop it and start living and pursuing Christ and living the joy of the Lord, living in the fruit of the Spirit and building and edifying people and themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jason. Absolutely. Uh, just to say, Ruth, Ruth Davis, it says you can't move forward looking in the rear view mirror. There's, there's, and Lynn confirmed that, Lynn confirmed that a house divided cannot stand. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Darren Lindsay says, talks, Lindsdale, sorry, talks about what to them that cause these little ones to stumble. Absolutely. Uh, Angela is, is agreeing with us. Karen, Karen, we should be all of, you know, we should be all of uh, it, something like that. It's slow going. Basically, we, they, they're all in agreement. We're just agreeing with you. Basically, uh, uh, Karen is agreeing with you. One of the, bo the bottom line is this. We, we, the reason why we're talking about all of this is that the word of God exposes even the carrier of the word of God. Oh, because oh. we all will come under, we all are under the word of God. The oh, pastor, oh. the preacher, the disciple, the word of God is the authority of the church. Amen. Amen. And we all submit under the word of God. And this is it. So we have to watch. And that's what, brother, something we're going to develop. Accountability. Okay. Accountability, oh. keeping short accounts with one another. Oh. When I spoke to some of my people, and that's what I say to them as well. We have to develop that. So it, it will help us to keep in check one another. Um, we, we, so we talked about blessed the, the merciful. With, uh, verse 8, we talked about blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm. That one is generally is one of the biggest, biggest, biggest challenge for me because it's hard, except God does it, you know, the mm. pure in heart are those who are sincere and transparent. Mm. Uh, they're without guile. These are the people who is like you talking to them, they're thinking they challenge, they think, why you think like that? You know, it's like they, oh, they see God in you, they see God in a trump, they see God in a beggar, they see God in creation, they see God in every they see God, they see the potential of God in a prostitute. Oh, they see yeah. potential of God in a rare. They see God. So it's so hard to have a pure in heart because we all are creeps sometimes. We all are motivated by something in our heart. So yeah. it's one of the challenging things to have a pure heart towards God, yeah. meaning to have a pure motives because with God is not what you do, it's why you do what you do. Yeah. So your motives to God has got to be as pure as you can remember. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, so, mm. Lord, it's like every day, we know David says, search, not my mind, search my mm. heart. See if there's any wicked ways in me. Amen? So, and that's the thing. And that's what I believe in Ezekiel, I think, 34. You know, he says, I'll give them a new heart. Mm, mm, remember? Mm. Because you know Jeremiah chapter is this seventeen nine, the heart is what deceitful above all things, oh. <laughs> desperately wicked. So, blessed are the pure in heart. God is saying, if if you give me your heart, you say oh. in Psalm in in Proverbs I think he said, my son, give me your heart. Oh. I know oh. what's in there. If you give God your heart, that's what we say in Romans ten. If you believe in your heart, oh. 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 you see. And you confess with your mouth. That's why we say when you become a Christian, you say, I've given my 
not my head. I've given my heart to the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Because the Holy Spirit, when he comes, the first thing he brings to your heart, sorry if I continue, I'm going, I'm going. This is just okay. someone saying that is burning my heart. In Romans 5, 5, the first thing the Holy Spirit brings to your heart is the love of God. Oh, oh, oh. Because we don't love perfectly because our hearts are polluted. Oh, oh. So we can't see God. We see, we project on other people's our insecurity. We project on other people's our wicked way of seeing things, you see. Oh, oh, and then oh. we're suspicious. We're thinking, I wonder what they're thinking about. I think because you only speaking what oh, you know you would do oh, in their place. You know what I'm saying? And oh. it's one of those chances. So blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God in in the people of God. The yeah. potential they are single, even in a sinner, because one of the things as a disciple, when you go on mission, you have to love the people you preach in the gospel. Like. Mm, mm. You can't preach the gospel because it's your duty. Mm, mm. We preach the gospel out of love. So that love has to be overflowing in your heart because the preaching the gospel is the call to death. You're going to die to self daily, and the people you're going to preach the gospel to. They can throw oil or tomatoes or eggs at you. Mm -hmm. You still have to love them. Go ahead, brother. No, I just want to... I think there's a proverb. I can't remember it, but you probably remember it. Uh, guard your heart. Yeah, so, with all you know, diligence. Guard your heart. So, um, Absolutely. I think uh, as you hunger for righteousness, uh, once that DNA of the Holy Spirit's in you, you DNA. might... Back you might backslide you might it, it's like a clapped out car it starts it, and then it, it, it's going you know and but it's going to keep going and so once that's once the spirit of god's in you, you there might be setbacks but you're gonna you're gonna get there you're gonna continue to pursue god yeah. and want more purity you might fail on the way many many times but once that dna is in you it's not going you're going to move forward so mm -hmm. I want to just encourage people from what you said that mm -hmm. those who have failed, those who have made mistakes, it's not over till it's over. You oh, get, no. get back up, ask for forgiveness, and move forward and pursue uh, that hunger that God has put in you and, and purify yourself in the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Angela is saying that we need God to show us our hearts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why I say in Jeremiah, you know, uh, uh, 17 verse 9 the heart is deceitful desperately wicked who can oh. know it i the lord search the heart i oh. the lord knows what's in there and the proverb you're talking about proverbs 4, 4 verse 23 it says guard your hearts with all diligence the car of out of it proceeds oh. the issues of life oh. and that's why he, i think in 23 he says my son give me your heart because oh, he knows the heart is the issue the, oh. the heart is to do with the motives, the reason, what, what motivates us? What drives you? What, when you wake up in the morning, what, what is that drive? What is your priority in your heart? Is God first, second, and third? You see? And you're so right. He who has begun a good work in us is able to finish it. So yes, yes, we can slide. Yes, we can backslide. But God's salvation is of the Lord. Hallelujah. He oh. will call you is able to keep you. He will save you, is able to keep you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will send Jason to talk to you. He will send somebody you disrespect to talk to you. He will send a donkey to talk to you. He will send somebody, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in restoration, you will still go to way of humility. So he will send somebody that you don't even expect to speak to you. He said, he said, he said, the children of Israel, Mm -hmm. I caused you to hunger these 40 years in the wilderness to try you to see what's in your heart, whether you will obey his commandments or not. Amen. So mm -hmm. that one, I tell you, it's a it's a tough one. It's mm -hmm. a tough one. Blessed the pure in heart, they shall see God. And then you talked about the peacemakers already. You see, as you grow, this is all part of and I believe Lord, the Lord is such a master teacher. I think it was progressive. One well, don't you think so? Oh, oh. <laughs> because <laughs> I think they're progressive. 
because you can't become pure in heart except you see God expose mm -hmm. your heart. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so that's oh. what Peter, Peter said, go away from me, I'm a sinful man. Jesus didn't say anything about sin. Oh. <laughs> but in Luke chapter 5, Peter knew that he, he was a stinker. So oh. anyway, and we thank God for what he said. I think somewhere Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired to save you as weak, but I pray that your faith don't fail you. So Jesus know we can deny him sometimes, we can backslide sometimes, we can do this, but because of the reason of our new birth in him, and because he said nobody, so he prayed for the faith of Peter, he will pray for your faith as well as my faith. He will pray. You can't have any better intercessor than the Lord himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So I praise God for that. Go ahead, brother. Well, I just can I give a testimony, just short testimony. Please, that come on. Yeah, I, I was converted reading these verses. And, wow. Uh, I, and uh, so they mean a lot to me uh, because uh, 30 years ago, I was on acid tabs on, on like, dr like drugs fighting in town. And uh, I was doing an open university degree and I was reading philosophy, the history of philosophy. Uh, Kant, Hume, and all these things. And my, my mom was beaten up and she was put in hospital. And I went crazy. I went into town. I committed attempted armed robbery. I went to prison. I saw Noel Proctor and a, an American uh, pastor called Johnny Washington. And I saw that I, they had something. They were living this out. They had this humility. This, this, they had this purity. They had something. I didn't know what it was. I came out. And uh, you know, Naomi. Uh, she and her mom invited me for a meal and they gave me uh, some books, two books by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, which were sermons on the Sermon on the Mount. And I was reading his sermons on here and I'm thinking, this is like, this is like no proctor. But I thought, this is way deeper than Kant. This is way deeper than you. What's this? This is this stuff. I couldn't get my head around it. I thought, who's this Jesus? He's, he's crazy. Blessed are the pure in our. Blessed are the me. <laughs> What's this all about? And this is what converted me, bro, because I thought, this is teaching that I couldn't get in all the philosophers. Mm -hmm. I, but I saw it in reality. I saw it in these chaplain, prison chaplains. I saw that they had something. And I said to myself, I wrote in the, diet, in, in the Lord John's book, I want what Noel Proctor has. I want what Johnny Washington has. And it's this pursuit of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. So I've just given that testimony just to encourage people. No, 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 brother. It's, it's absolutely it's very good. I'm, and I'm thankful, I'm thankful for that. I had to, for me, my case was as soon as I was baptized in 2001, got married, I went straight on a four days discipleship training. So I never knew anything else but discipleship in London. Mm, mm, mm. Really, as soon as, when I came to Christianity, I knew there's nothing to Christianity except becoming a disciple. Mm, mm, so, mm. so, yes, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely vital. God has called you to the depth at the beginning, brother. Mm, because mm. the Sermon on the Mount, I'm going to be going through, uh, I'm going through the series. I'm going to do five, five minutes of each line that we're talking about pre-recorded basically I'm, I'm going to release it like that mm, mm, mm. it's the best sermon that obviously jesus taught is three chapters matthew 5 6 and 7 and uh, for me brother the whole bible jesus summed it up in those three chapters mm. because the epistles are commentaries of the sermon on the mount they develop mm. from the sermon on the mount mm, yeah. so i can i can go to james with you he talks about the wisdom that is above is first pure, blessed the pure in spirit, and then peaceable, blessed the peacemakers. You you can go through if you go to I can take you to uh, Psalm. It tells you righteousness is is all. He has them all like in line. So mm. when I came to Manchester in two thousand and three, and I met this man called Maurice Barrett, and he was teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. So you can imagine I'm the Lord delivered. I read the Bible cover to cover in year two thousand. Got yeah. married in year 2001, moved to Manchester in year 2002, yeah. met Maurice. This, all he does is discipleship. 
It's crazy. All he talks about, he goes to Uganda, he goes to Nigeria, he built, all he does is discipleship. So that was, it was a special grace for me mm. to mm. Uh, to have that at the beginning as a foundation. Mm. 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 So the same way for you to have that at the beginning, that's the call of God to his heart because mm. God will entrust a disciple, not a follower. God mm. will entrust a disciple with his authority and power because God can entrust Jesus with all the hosts of heaven, with all powers and authority, because he was meek, because he was humble. Oh, oh. And he, so, he was so humble, he can give that authority to the disciples, not worry that they will squander or whatever. Because this is it. A true leader, a true teacher is prepared to give up. Because he said, Jesus said, the student will be like, a teach, like the teacher. Amen? Oh, oh. Mm, mm, mm. So a true leader, that's what they do. They transfer this. So I'm thankful for those who met with you. And oh, Naomi, tell her a special God bless her. <laughs> Absolutely, my brother. So as we finish, the peacemakers are a consequence of everything that we saw so far. Oh. And uh, my, my sister uh, uh, Ruth is reminding me that a peacemaker is different from a peacekeeper. A peacekeeper is the one who just want to keep the peace. He's willing <laughs> to compromise. Mm. Like, like, like the, that African unity, something. Like they want to compromise for the sake of peace. But mm. the peacemaker has to make peace. He has to stop the war. Jesus came to make peace between us and God. Because God was angry at us. Mm. So he came to stop the wrath that was destined to us. So he had to make peace in between us you know what i'm saying he goes absolutely and mm. therefore he said my peace i give with you my peace i leave to you and that's what god is saying you are blessed if you are like my son mm. i give my peace not like the world gives you you see because the peace of god you know in a, in the philippians 4 he said the peace of god will guard your hearts and mind the peace mm. of god will protect your mind you know mm. people go crazy mm. in their minds so yeah, absolutely. So, mm. so that's it. So one of the things is that the peacemakers, he said they shall be called sons of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Because we're following the son of God. Amen. Mm. Who's a peace, who's a real peacemaker. Amen. So we're becoming like him. So I can see that progressive, it means these are now the consequences of you walking in humility, being teachable, being pure in heart. Now you become merciful you become mm. pure in heart you become a peacemaker because mm. whenever you preach the gospel my brother you are a peacemaker mm. because you're going to reconcile a non an infidel a non-believer you're making peace between him and god mm. 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 because god's wrath is over the sinner god's mm. wrath is over the unbeliever mm. is mm. still there until the gospel of peace Mm, mm. goes to that unbeliever and that's what we are called to do mm, mm, makes mm. sense right mm, mm. and then the rest the rest now the, uh, the the two the two beatitude left blessed are those who are who are persecuted for righteousness sake i'm going to let you talk about that one <laughs> but, so blessed are those who are persecuted that there's two types of persecution number one here verse 10 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for there is the kingdom of heaven. For righteousness sake is because they have they have now the righteousness of Christ and they're doing things right. They're living righteously in the society. And guess what happened? Oh. You begin to be persecuted. People begin to call you like you holy than thou. Or oh. you think you're too much. You know who calls you like that? Or the Christians. Oh. Oh. They begin to persecute you because you're standing. You don't want to fiddle the tax anymore. You don't want to lie mm. anymore you don't want to be part of the gossip anymore because you have inherited in 2 corinthians 5 21 you have inherited he wouldn't you know sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of christ of god in christ so now you have the righteousness the imparted righteousness of christ upon you now people seeing you doing the things righteously mm. they don't like that mm. and the last one is you're blessed he says 
I, I'll let you talk after, after this. Verse 11 now says, Blessed are you, this is personal now. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. And that's the only time in the whole entire New Testament that Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Oh. When they're calling you all names and now you're standing for Jesus now. Now you're willing to die. You're willing oh. to go to prison. You're willing to do whatever it takes for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. this is this is the the heights of it so now you can't get there except you have been preparing to become a disciple now disciple by this by this stage is too late he sold out go ahead bro i think a couple of things i think one thing here is the beatitude is like the heart isn't it it's like the heart of the yeah. believer it's like when yes. jesus says you must be born again so things are the qualities that's as that's coming in the heart this mm -hmm. is pursuing righteousness purity of heart the meekness mm -hmm. and then then there's this outward thing that happens the persecution but it's because yes. something of the kingdom has come into your life all that you've been describing yes and and w know that your your walk with the lord is a re reality when yeah. it begins this hunger for god will manifest outwardly eventually into persecution and yeah. I, I just want to say one thing is yeah. for those uh out there is uh you don't seek martyrdom and you don't seek no oh but no I, there are certain people out there who are macho uh want to be spiritual macho people where they they look for or they have a martyr complex where they 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 purposely look for persecution in other words they put themselves in harm's way. They they wind up the police. They they wind up people purposely, yeah. and then they get yeah. some backlash. And then mm -hmm. they then they claim, "Oh, look at me, I'm a martyr." No, mm -hmm. you to you to go about. It says their meekness. Yes, you to go about things in meekness. And if you go as you go about preaching the gospel, doing the kingdom work, you don't have to worry about persecution. It will come to you. But there are certain people out there. That they have a, a perverse kind of attitude that they they and I think it's because they want attention yeah. and uh they want to be the talking point and they they purposely wind people up yeah. and they and they shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, it's it's good you say that because that's presumption anyway. You see, that's uh that's just arrogance. That's unfortunately when it happens like that, brother, look at how God took you. Mm. Not many have that grace. Some have started believing, but mm. didn't have the right foundation. Because there's something about the encounter. Mm. And there's something about man-made Christians. You know, you raise your hands, you squeeze somebody's hand, and everybody close their eyes, so you did this, and then they say, I see you, I see you. And you know, those kind of, those kind of Christian man-made and all that. When you have truly received the encounter that we talked about, you know nobody will teach you on the fear of God. You will know what it means to fear God. Yeah. But those ones there, because one of the things that is challenging, the reason I'm, I'm talking a little bit about it, brother, is this. We're talking about the creator of heaven and earth. We're yeah. talking about the greatest I am. We're talking about being the speak, the spoke person of the, the one who can stop your breath anytime mm, mm. how dare we try because when you're looking for problems you're blaspheming his name mm. you're blaspheming oh. his character you're putting the very people that his son came to die for you're putting them off your christianity mm, 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 mm. so whenever you know what we call sin that we don't really realize we don't mm. see sin how god sees sin Mm -hmm. so we don't know really how bad it is we don't know how many times we insult god's character by our actions we don't really realize it. i think there has to be a teaching on it on the fear of god to the point that that now will keep you mm. in your walk with god in a way because that's what you think you're just trying to do something and everything you don't know 
that oh. you're blaspheming the name of God. Never mind those unbelievers who use the name as a swear word. That's not that's not a concern to God. Is when you and me oh, step oh. out, say we speak for God, oh, and we oh. behave differently oh. outwardly and inwardly. We behave. That is just that oh. is just. That's why I wanted to talk about it, brother. I'm, yeah, I'm I happy understand, you know that. I, understand, I understand what you're saying. That's a that's a important point that you made. This comes down mm -hmm. to God, really. What you're saying. Yeah. All, David said, only against you have I sinned. So all yeah. sin is against God, you see. So and now the willful sin, that indiscipline kind of sin, that lack of accountability kind of sin, that lack of that presumption kind of sin, that, mm. like Karen said, it reminds me of the wash white tombs, you know, kind of sin. And then he said, whatever it takes kind of, you know, those, those kind of things, we, mm. can't, we can't be... It gets me more irritated that God don't have a problem with weak people. Welcome yeah. to the club. We are all weak. We just have a powerful God. God has a problem with arrogant and proud people. The yeah, blood of yeah, Christ yeah, don't yeah, cleanse pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blood of Christ is is completely against against pride, but the blood of Christ cleans the humble because you're saved by grace. You're saved by humility. So grace comes as you humble yourself. God will give you more grace. Remember. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I just thought we, it, it's a good point to to maybe close with, honestly, brother. I'm so thankful that we, we've been able to do this series. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. I, I believe there's much more. We need, we're going to continue even as you go to <clears throat> your missionary country. <laughs> just we are praying that I get the flight. It was cancelled today. I've, I got my money back. And I've got to rebook it now. So if you could pray, I can get it sorted out. So. When are you? When are you going? Well, it was it was for the twentieth of March, but mm -hmm. uh, I've got to rebook it. I've got they've given me my voucher, the money back, like so. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and get it round about the twentieth, up to twenty seventh. So. Okay, so you go just like a few days before me. Yeah, yeah, or it might even be yeah. the same time. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you. I know. I, I know you love the mission so much. You can't wait to go. <laughs> I do. I, I, I do. I want to be with my wife. I, I, I need to be. With, I want to be with. I my know. Wife. I know, brother. And I just want to say to people, you guys have seen me with Jason. We haven't seen each other for eighteen years. We just saw each other a month ago. Yeah. We had about three to five teachings together. And we had other things behind the scenes together that you guys might not even know that we've been meeting behind the scenes together, continuing the ministry. If any of you, after watching all of this, if any of you, my brothers and sisters, want to support what Jason is doing, you know he's on Facebook. Drop me a line. Speak to him directly. Sow into his life. Sow into his ministry. Do whatever it takes, guys. Please. Do whatever it takes. Um, it's hard out there. It's hard. It's hard out there. And um, like we said at the beginning, there are those that God makes available to go. There are those that God empower in the spirit to pray. There are those that God provides so they can provide and support those who are going. So please, on behalf of Jason, he wouldn't ask you, support him in any which way, shape or form that you can. It's not. It's a. It's a long-term thing. Uh, I like my brother because he gave himself first. He just didn't. He just didn't give money. He gave, he gave himself. And I believe all of us have given ourselves to God. And let's do whatever it takes as we God, as the Lord leads us. Amen. Yeah. Brother Jason, please. I would. I would like the honor for you to close in prayer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Father, we come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, this study that we've had about mission, Father, we, we pray that it wouldn't just be words, but that it would be reality. We pray that everything we shared would go in our hearts. We pray that we would live it. So we pray today that everything that is not right in our hearts, you cut it away. As my brother Cameroon, we pray that you'd make a way 
that father uh, all the ground that he's about to step on with his family that father he would anoint that ground and that there would be uh, doors open and there would be fruit we pray for protection for his family and we pray that you would protect in every way work and we pray that the work would open up in Cameroon we pray that souls will get saved and people would be discipled and the churches would be strengthened and the churches would be growing a, a, in maturity so we pray that it would be a profound change in the churches in Cameroon and, and that your kingdom would be built there I pray for my brother that father his gifts your gifts that you've given him that father you would strengthen him I pray that you would strengthen his family I pray that you would always protect his family I pray that you would always keep his family safe I pray that you would use his family and that you would use him. I pray for the plans to disciple people in the hall, that you would bless those plans. And I pray that you would bless the plans in Cameroon and beyond. We thank you for this time together and we give you the prayers of the glory. Keep us close to you, Lord. Help us to walk in reality and help us to uh, share your love to one another and to the world around us. So Father, Son and Holy Spirit, these three are one. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to thank God for my brother, Jason. Father, I thank you that you have uh, healed his wife back in Ghana and that he will be going back to be with her and to continue the mission that you have sent him and the work that you have prepared beforehand for him. Father, I pray, even as he goes about doing your work, it's your work, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you have prepared you already you will cause him to meet the people he needs to meet, my Lord and my God, that he will do the work according to your will, Father. I thank you that you cause us to meet again, Father, and I thank you for his life, and I know we'll meet again by the grace of God. Father, I thank you for those who will be watching this video. Father, they, they, that they will be stirred, that they will be provoked, that they will have things confirmed to them. And yeah. Father, I pray that you will encourage them in the word, Father, for we are mm. speaking the truth. This is just a minimum that we can speak, my Lord and my God. But your Holy Spirit will take whatever anybody needs and give it to them, Father, that they might grow thereby. Mm. Father, we mm. all mm. I pray mm. that we remain teachable. Father, I pray that we remain, we will continue to walk in the humility of your son, Jesus Christ, and that we will stay that way, like my brother said. Humility first, humility second, humility third, until your son, Jesus Christ, comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, brother. Amen. God well, bless you guys. Thank you very much for your patience. We love you and uh, keep in touch. Uh, yes. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you. Bye -bye.